Now let me give you the overview of uh, Backup Boss. When you activate the plugin, you will see on the left side this new menu, the uh, Backup Boss menu. And the first thing to do would be to, to go to the settings and uh, just change a couple of things over there. Uh, by the way, your uh, Backup Boss comes with um, those uh, pull-down instructions that will uh, always give you more detail uh, on uh, every aspect of uh, running the program. And when you're just starting, you might want to show all the instructions. Um, later on, when you're familiar with the program, you can hide all of that and only uh, present the uh, minimalistic interface. So the first thing is to specify your local backup folder. And you, you can uh, leave it um, as snapshots. What the program is going to do is uh, protect that folder so that uh, people cannot really access it from the outside only the program will be able to do that. Next, um, the uh, database segment size. Now, this is really important because um, if the number is uh, way too big and you're running um, a very slow server, then um, there is a danger of um, the command timing out. But 1000 is really very, very low number. That would be the number for um, uh, shared uh, websites uh, or rather websites that are on the shared server with, with 10,000 other websites, I would suggest that you put at least 5,000 for the uh, database segment size. And um, uh, finally, if you go down here and you select zip archive as your compression library, it's a good idea to do so because zip archive is uh, better and faster than PCL zip. Uh, and it also uses um, the disk as the temporary memory, whereas PCL zip, which is built into WordPress, uses um, the, uh, the memory, which means that we, with really very large websites, if it runs out of memory, that can um, uh, be detrimental to the uh, backup process. Once you have done all of that, don't forget to save the settings. The next thing to do is to specify the destinations in order to tell the program where the backups are going to be stored. Amazon S3 is supported and so is Dropbox um, and uh, FTP, SFTP and finally Google Drive. Now this is very self-explanatory so what you would need to do is just to click on add new depending on the account that you have, uh, follow the prompts on the screen and in no time you will set up the destination, which from that moment on is used over and over again to store your backups. And we are ready to create the first snapshot. So go to Add New Snapshot and uh, we'll give it a name, something that um, you can uh, use to um, easily recognize the snapshot that you want to create. The uh, settings that I would use was to include the common files such as themes, plugins, um, and the media. Unless you have uh, a really big media files such as the uh, videos, in which case it would be a good idea to exclude them, otherwise your backups will tend to become really, really big. Uh, next, uh, we want to include all the uh, database tables most of the time. And uh, finally, don't forget to um, uh, set up the uh, uh, remote destination. So um, in my case, I'm going to select Dropbox number one. And rather than run the immediate backup, which is something that you can always do, um, I would suggest that you do it once per week. Now, if you set it to once weekly and then set up uh, the number of uh, local archives to 52, that is going to give you the uh, weekly backups for one entire year. If you cl then click on Create Snapshot, from this moment on, the uh, program will be very much on autopilot. If you need to restore the backup, that really is a very straightforward operation. You would go to all snapshots, that is going to list all the snapshots that you have made. Select the one that you want to restore and simply click on restore and the program will do the rest.